Today on Co-op for Two, a spoiler-free review of Medical Mysteries New York City Emergency Room. Why do I think this groundbreaking game deserves your attention? Stay tuned to find out. Let me say first that I purchase all of the games we play on this channel myself and I have no relationship with any publisher. So if you want to see more unbiased content like this, I hope you will subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and consider supporting us. Medical Mysteries is a $25 box currently available perhaps only at Target in the US, but hopefully wider distribution soon. It's a cooperative solo game, basically solo, but well suited for a small group to play together. There are four unrelated cases in the box, ranging from a very easy case to a sort of medium difficult case. Each case will take you about an hour, maybe a little bit more if you take your time to play through. Um, you can't replay the cases. They're mysteries that you try to solve. Once you've played through it, you understand it well enough. But nothing gets destroyed. You can pass it along. There's no use of the internet. It's a completely analog experience and no randomness. In each case, the setting is the same. You're a doctor at an emergency room. A patient will come in presenting symptoms. You have to figure out what's going on and treat it in a short period of time. It's not real time, so you could take your time on turns for the most part. Um, and then in the end, you'll have to answer some questions. You'll have to make a diagnosis and some recommendations, and then you'll read an epilogue that explains the case, what happened, what was the true cause of everything, and then we'll score you based on how well you did. I think the best way to explain how the game works is to walk you through the tutorial. I've said this is uh, free of spoilers in this game. The tutorial basically isn't something for you to figure out. It basically tells you what to do. So I don't think you're missing anything here. However, you do have a couple more options other than watching me explain the tutorial here. You can stop watching this and jump to watch our playthrough of the tutorial on YouTube where we slowly go through the entire thing. That's about an hour long. And I should say at this point that we've actually played all four of the real cases on the channel. Hmm, takes us about two or three hours to play some of the harder ones. So you've got about 10 hours of video if you want to watch playthroughs, but I suggest you do that after you play the game yourself. And your last option, of course, is to use the timestamps in this video to just jump to the end to see my final recommendations. Okay, having said that, let's take a look at the box contents and the tutorial scenario. So we've got an envelope of general rules and materials that you'll use in all of the cases. And then we've got the tutorial case. And then there are four more self-contained envelopes of other cases in the box. Okay, so let's take a look at what's in the general materials here. We've got a little overview of anatomy. We've got a rule book, which you really don't need to have use much because the tutorial will walk you through it. You've got a code book, which is where we'll look up what cards to draw. And then you've got these research pamphlets, which I think are important to show you. They're all open up. They're filled with reading. This is a game where you will have to do quite a bit of detailed reading about real medical conditions. So we've got drugs, we've got brain health, specialists, some legal information, conditions, various tests that can be run, little sidebar on blood and different procedures you can run and some different specialties here about the heart, vitamins, supplements, etc. Okay, let's put the rules to the side for a second and open up the tutorial envelope. In each envelope, you will see basically the same thing. There's an epilogue that you don't want to look at 
yet, but everything else you pull out and put in front of you. You've got a deck of cards for each case. For the tutorial, it's a very small deck. They get bigger as the cases go on. You have a patient form, which you use to track your actions as you play, and then provide your final answers to questions and recommendations. We have an intake interview. For the tutorial, you only use this sheet instead of these five booklets. So it's a much shorter amount of information to consider. Then we've got a special page for the tutorial that you won't get in the normal cases that basically walks you through the solution step by step to tell you what to do. Let's just put that aside for a second. And then in every case, you also get this nice larger summary of their state, their medical condition, and a sort of write-up by the doctors that took her into the ER, took your patient into the ER. So this and this will basically be the same information answered for each patient. So you would start by reading this patient intake interview, which is just you talking to the patient or their loved one if they come in incommunicable. So she gives you this setup here. I was gardening all day. You know this New York summer heat. I should have taken a break. I was getting herbs for my Etsy business. I, I think I pulled a muscle in my back. And I'm pretty sure I got heat stroke too. I almost passed out from the pain on the subway. I went to bed early. I couldn't sleep. The pain kept increasing. Finally, I decided I needed to go to the emergency room. All of these cases will then direct you to take the first story card and the first status card. These are key. Everything else you'll do in the game will be drawing from these cards. You always have a status card describing the current state of your patient. Here she starts out in severe pain and all the actions you can perform. If we look, nothing on the back of this one. And then we're going to get her first story card. The first story card always gives you interview questions you can ask the patient. And a reminder here of the cost for asking them. So the entire game will be played by taking up to 12 actions. Actually, you can take more after you finish, but 12 proper actions starting at midnight, which is when your shift begins, and this is where you would record what you want to do. Your actions are always listed on the cards in front of you. So each of these things we could do is an action. We start out with a little reminder that we could ask interview questions as actions, but we've also got these blue, which are tests we can perform. Then these orange are more severe procedures we could perform then drugs we could prescribe or administer right now, and then we can also consult specialists. After every three actions, an event triggers, which can change the situation. Your patient might get better or worse. So when 2 a.m. hits, we look on our current status card and we look up that code. So at 2 a.m., when she's in this state, code TAM, will trigger and that continues down to the end of the night. Your goal is to get them to survive the night. That's your minimal goal, but you're also trying to figure out what's going on. When you want to look up a code, so if we wanted to do a urinalysis on her, we would look up CPP in this booklet. All the cases share this same booklet. You'd look up a code. Sometimes looking up a code tells you what happens briefly in a sentence, but more frequently, it'll tell you to draw a certain card and read it. Occasionally, you'll be told to draw a new status card because her status has changed, hopefully for the better, but sometimes for the worse. So that's the basic way the game works. Now in the tutorial, it explains all this to you, but it also walks you through what you should do. So we start here with action one, and it tells us, let's start by asking Luana a question about her back pain. So it tells you, okay, it's suggesting as your first action, we ask her, tell me about your back pain, where does it hurt? 
So that will cost us an action. So we'd write down here that we're asking our question one. The result code is BPA. This is just to keep a record of what you've done. We'd look it up here. If we look up BPA in the booklet here, it says take story card six. So we go and draw story card six and we hear what she says about it. She says, I guess it isn't my whole back. I mean, I hurt all over, but the sharp pain I'm feeling is on the right side. Here, I'll show you. Lana puts her hand on her flank, the area between her ribs and hips. She seems to be indicating the location of her kidney. This is very typical for the cards. You might have a little bit of artwork and some text. Sometimes you'll get all text. Sometimes they will be results of a report. Okay, so we've done one of our three actions before 2 a.m. And now we might decide what do we want to do next. Remember, all of the actions we can take are here or in the interviews. If you follow the tutorial, she has a little commentary and she says the second question she suggests is to consult a kidney specialist which we have down here. Look for the nephrologist. Okay, so now remember that while you're deciding what to do, you've got these research booklets. In the full game, you've got five of these, four-sided pieces of paper. Here you just have this. So you could look up and read a little bit about possible kidney infections. Inflammation of the kidney due to bacterial infection symptoms include frequent urination, flank pain, fever, CBC blood test will show a high WBC, urinalysis will show signs of infection, treat with antibiotics. If left untreated, the condition may lead to kidney failure and even death. Patients can die in this game. So you want to be reading these things, thinking about what tests you should perform, what symptoms to expect, what Drugs might interact with, it, with certain things that you might not want to do. And that's basically how the game plays. It'll walk you through the tutorial, all the different actions you can take. If everything goes well, you'll cure your patient. And then sometimes you'll get a card that says your patient's doing a lot better. It's probably time to end the game. At that point, you'll turn the page and you'll fill out these three items here. Uh, your, your conclusion about what caused the symptoms, then a summary of what you did for the patient. What did you prescribe? What did you suggest? That's probably just a summary of information here, but it might be some other information. And then future recommendations. And this is more open-ended here, and you might want need to think a little bit outside the box about recommendations here. You might, this is the one time when you might be putting things that aren't here on one of your cards, maybe some general advice you tell her, don't work out in the sun without a hat, etc. that kind of stuff. If you run out of time, if you use up all the time, but your patient is still alive, and you want to figure out more information, the game does let you keep playing. You'll get a score penalty for that, but you can actually take as much time as you want to investigate and do more actions. Some of these actions, I should say, don't have codes. They just say to flip over the card. So if you wanted to do a CBC blood test, you would flip over this card. You'd look up the blood test. And here it depends on what time you run the test. So if you ran it early, you'd look up this code BLT. If you ran it at the very last minute, you'd look up code GTY. So that's the fact that these have different outcomes depending on when you do it uh, highlights one of the key parts of this game that when you do things and in what order can change the effects and can change uh, how well you're going to treat the person and solve their problems. Sometimes you might even solve the case but have done have missed certain tests that you should have done or certain treatments you should have done to reduce their pain or to figure out something's not the cause so even if you have solved it you may not get a great score if you neglected to do certain things so i've given you a detailed look at how the game plays the mechanics through the tutorial i think that's important to get a feel for this game but now i'm going to spend a good chunk of time talking about why all these mechanics work so well together. First of all, there is this sheet here 
where you've got a limited number of actions before these events trigger that change the status of your patient. This completely changes the, changes the feel of our traditional mystery games where time is not really moving forward. You can take your time, you can explore whatever you want. Here, you're palpably aware of the fact that your patient is at real risk. There is a serious tension and you've got such few actions you can take. And not only that, but the act order of the actions make a mechanical difference. If you don't treat someone's pain, maybe they're not gonna be cooperative and they're not gonna let you perform certain tests. If you don't ask certain questions first, then you won't know what tests to perform. And if you don't perform the test, but you run an operation and it needs some information, you would have gotten through a test. All of these things interact to make the decisions in this game feel very weighty and important and tense. You feel like, even though it's not real time, for the most part, I'll come back to that, uh, you feel like your, your decisions matter and they're, you feel the, the clock ticking. The other thing that's unique here for a mystery game, and make no mistake, this really is a mystery game where you'll have to do a lot of reading and careful reading of all these different charts and cards. There are subtle pieces, clues, and information you'll have to pay attention to. This isn't a strategy game. You'll do a lot of reading in this game and studying and searching for information. But one of the things that makes this different from a traditional mystery game is you've got these different kinds of actions that all interrelate. So half of your actions are gathering information, running tests, or interviewing them. And then the other half of the actions have to do with treating the patient, either just prescribing some drugs to them or doing major operations, major serious operations. And getting that balance right is tricky and stressful. You may feel like this patient's at risk of dying if I don't perform this operation right away, but am I sure that's the right operation to perform or do I need to do some tests first to make sure? Do I need to do some tests to make sure I'm not gonna make things worse? And one of the real wonderful parts about this game is that you absolutely can make things worse. There's a big stack of cards in the normal cases and you won't see, you'll only see half of them if you do things right. But you could absolutely, the game gives you the freedom to do the wrong things. So you're not just solving the mystery, but you may make mistakes on the way. And when you make a mistake, you prescribe a wrong medicine, do a wrong operation, if you're lucky, you just get no information, nothing happens. If you're unlucky, you've caused a complication. You, you caused something bad to happen and the patient takes a turn for the worse. Their status changes, which changes the things you can do to help them and diagnose. You get a bad story card that starts to tell you they're going into shock or bad things are happening. They're in incredible pain. Uh, you feel responsible for that mistake and the weight on your shoulders when you play this game is not trivial. We played one case here. If you buy this and play through it, you can watch our playthrough where we were uh, really um, upset that we had done made a mistake, that we had done something wrong. The other surprising thing here is, is surprising how uh, realistic all of this material looks like. The tests and procedures are all described at quite a high level. I mean, it's clear that serious medical professionals were involved in this game. Now, there is some simplification, but not that much. And uh, you will learn about, I think it's, it's almost underselling it to say that you're gonna learn some medical information. You absolutely will learn medical information uh, symptoms, diagnoses, diseases, problems. But it feels like this game is going beyond that. You are learning not just facts and information about what causes what symptoms, but you are learning, the game feels like it's training you a little bit how to think about these things, 
how to think about the likelihood of certain problems and what you should do to rule them out and the best practices. It's actually, I am not a fan in general of educational games. They feel, it feels bolted on like it's not a true part of the game. Here it feels completely integrated. It's active application of the information that you learn. And you'll feel good when you picked up something in one of these documents, a symptom that matches what your person says or something that tells you, wait a minute, we should not prescribe this drug. That kind of stuff. It feels good. You feel clever when you do well in this game. So I've talked about a couple things that make this game feel so active and make it feel like time is moving forward and that it creates this tense sense of danger and almost makes it feel like a real-time game. How these status cards are changing, how the patient could get worse or better. You feel good when they get a little better, but you know you're not out of the woods. When something goes wrong, you have to fix it. But there are actually, in this game, little mechanical twists that actually play on this, and there's occasional real-time element where all of a sudden you have to make a decision with the real clock on the wall ticking by, and it's very clever, and there are a couple other mechanical twists that happen that make the game feel a little bit more dynamic, hard to predict, and make it feel like when you make a mistake, you are really under the gun. And I think on the other side of that, I mean, you can tell this is a very polished game that went through lots of playtesting and iterations and cleverness. But one of the things that's so nice here is you've got this very tight clock ticking down. Most of the time, you don't actually make it to the end here if you've done well. Typically, your patient will be well enough that you can end the game. You've got enough information to end the game, but it may not always be wise to. There may be a little bit extra information, a little bit more things you can figure out that you might want to use up all your time. And then the game is generous enough to say, look, if you get to the end and you're not ready to stop, you're not fully sure, just take as much time as you want. You'll get a little bit of penalty, but the game lets you take as much time as you want and doesn't force you to end. That's a very clever, mechanic that's going to make a lot of people happy. It's almost the best of all worlds. You've got this constant sense of tension and the clock ticking by thematically. And yet the game almost always lets you take as much time as you need to figure it out. It's a very good balance. There's another huge part of this game that makes it work so well. And that is that sort of on paper, it feels like a medical mystery where it's sort of abstract. You're running tests, you're prescribing treatments. But there's a hidden piece here that really makes this whole thing work, and that's the human element. You've always got a, a single patient that's coming in that's got a name and a face. You're talking to them when they come in. You're asking them questions. Their state is changing. And these initial questions you ask them you often will get another interview card that lasts, you ask them more questions, more cards where they tell you about their status. Like if they start to go in pain, they'll talk to you about it. You've got this initial interview, which describes some of the things they've said. These feel like real people. In the beginning, it's just a name and a face. By the time you get into this case and they're suffering, depending on you to help them, you feel responsible. And it's not just that you feel responsible, you've got this interview, but um, it's that they feel like real people. And what that means is they may not always be telling you the truth. They may be mistaken. There may be little psychological elements you have to pick up on. You may not trust everything they say. It may be either a mistake on their part, a little bit unreliable. So you're dealing with real people. It feels like this is a reflection of a real world, what a doctor would have to take into account. And that adds a real psychological element to these cases. Sometimes they come in with a loved one and you're talking to that other person to gain information. Sometimes the information you're going to gain from them depends on their status. Are they in too much pain? Then they're not really going to want to talk to you. That kind of thing. It really adds 
a different twist, a whole different thing you have to consider. Not just are you considering these medical facts, but you're also considering all these psychological elements. And by the end of the case, you will care about this patient. As I said, we played one of these cases where we didn't do all that well, and we felt guilty. We absolutely felt, felt guilty. And it also plays into the mystery. There are some cases where you have to be you have to be watching and looking at what they've said and the details. Maybe there are little clues. There are clues everywhere here, but they're not always just medical clues. Sometimes they're psychological clues, depending on what they say. The last thing I want to talk about is sort of uh, is the wrap up, the way these cases end. I've already described, you have sort of a limited amount of time at which events happen, and you could lose a patient, or you could have a good outcome, and the patient could survive the night, but your case isn't really over. And you could choose to end the case early, or keep going, or even prolong. But at the end of the case, when you're ready to finish, you'll fill out this thing, which I've talked about. What caused the symptoms, what treatments, and then what do you recommend? And one of the brilliant parts about this game is how these, this ending is treated and how you're scored. And it's a tough nut to crack for a mystery game. Uh, we've seen it tried in different ways, but typically in a mystery game, you get questions. You get like five questions. Who was the murderer? How did they do it? And then you'll get scored on those five questions. You'll get different amounts of score. And you're, when you score yourself, you just quickly go through the questions. You see how you answered them right or wrong, and you get your score. Small number of questions, a small set of factors that give you your score. Here, this is a little deeper. Um, when you finish the case, you'll read the epilogue. The epilogue will tell you what happened and maybe walk you through some alternatives that could have happened depending on what you do. And then it'll have a section about scoring. I'm not even going to show you that in the tutorial. Um, but for the more complicated cases, the scoring is quite subtle and fine-grained. So you might get scored a small penalty for not running a test that you should have run, even though it would have come back negative and doesn't affect the answer to these questions. You should have, as a good doctor, as a precautionary measure, run that test. And then there's a whole bunch of things, like maybe you could have solved her problem without ever reducing her pain, but it would have been such a traumatic experience that you should have addressed that. And then frequently, there might be different ways to solve a problem, different treatments, and you might get more reward for doing the perfect thing or slightly less reward for a slightly imperfect thing. Your assignment really as an emergency room person is to keep them alive throughout the night. So sometimes you will succeed at that, but you won't have succeeded at really treating their full problem. So you might get scored slightly differently based on how well, how fully you treated them. And then frequently, the recommendations is sort of like this open-ended thing. And on the harder cases, there are some very subtle things that can show up in here, like recommendations of lifestyle or alternate treatment or suggestions or alternate things to do. And the scoring might have like five different things, ways to tweak your points a little bit if you really went above and beyond and did something that maybe was thinking outside of the box. And what that means is you really get rewarded for being clever. It's very hard to get a perfect score and you're really motivated to really think through, is there anything more we can do? Is there anything more we should say? And let's really try to avoid doing something that's gonna make things a little bit worse. Even if we can recover it, it'll be reflected in our score. And it's one of the few mystery games where you really are motivated to get a, as to do as good a job as you can and get a high score. And I think uh, mystery games have a lot to learn here. It's really a very well done thing. And you may not see it too much in your first case or two, and the first case may seem too easy, but it will ramp up and get significant. By the time we finished this box, we were very excited about the possibility of more cases, which I'll talk about in a second. 
before I get to my final thoughts, I want to talk a little bit about possible things that might be improved in uh, future iterations of this game. It is actually a very polished game, uh, very tight, and it's hard to point out, it's hard to identify problems, but I'm going to pick up a little a couple of nitpicks and some suggestions to the designers for ways it might be improved. Um, I think maybe this box is a little on the easy side, although it's I, I, it's not true for the second half of the cases, but maybe the first case a little easy. That's not a, uh, that's not a knock on this game. It just means that for really experienced mystery gamers, a harder box of cases would be nice. I do think there are a couple of improvements that could be made to this patient form. First of all, you get one of these for each case. So if you actually write on these, you you're going to have a hard time passing it along unless you can download uh, additional copies. I'm sure additional copies will be available to download, but it would be nice if the box included a whole bunch of these. Um, you might want to uh, scan and print a couple copies until Board Game Geek has downloads. But there are other things that could be improved. For the most part, you can record all of your notes on this thing, but there are a couple things that you can't record. You can't record which events triggered at each time, which is kind of a shame since you'd like a total history. And there's no room or extra pages for recording your overtime, so that's a little bit of a shame. Um, there were a couple of times when we encountered some rule change mechanic and it wasn't clear to us what, how time should be moving on this chart. It might be nice to clear up that. There was one or two cases where we were ready to discharge the patient and send them home, other, except for the fact that we needed to ask them a question to make sure of something. And that was a little bit of a miss. I think I'd like to see more interview questions. It's a really nice aspect of the game. You really think hard about asking them a question. They, you might get an unreliable answer and you're eating up a valuable amount of time. But I would like to see more questions and more questions that change throughout the case. Maybe a question you could ask at the end before you send them home. As a little anecdote, we talked to the designers of the game and they said when they were playtesting this with doctors, doctors did some of the worst of all the playtesters. And the primary reason was they didn't bother talking to the patients. The doctors thought they need, knew better. They didn't want to waste time asking the patients questions that might be unreliable. So maybe that's a little lesson to the doctors. Um, I think another area of improvement that we were thinking about when we were playing is the leaking of information on these status cards. So one of the really nice elements of the game and these status cards is, unlike many mystery games, all of the actions that are available to you at any given time are on this card. So even though you've got this huge list of possible tests you could perform and drugs you could prescribe, right, most of them are not going to be available to you. So, in some ways, this leaks information. This, by looking at this, you know, oh, I see, the only two things I can prescribe at this point are these two drugs. Now, they change over time, so in the beginning, you won't know all the things you should consider. But it does feel like it's sort of like a hint. And it's mechanically needed because of the way you look up things, but it might be nice I think this is going to be very good for beginners or even intermediate players. And it's not terrible for experienced players, but it might be nice to have a version of the game where every option was available to you and just some of them had no, had no outcome. It just said this does nothing. That would make the game significantly more challenging and require you to spend much more time studying. Here you could just say, okay, these are the three things we could do. Let me look up those three things. It does make it more manageable, but easy. It might be nice to have a hard mode that could do away with this set of actions up front. Another area that I think might, uh, could be improved is, I think the amount of educational content here while you're playing the game is really good. I don't know that you need that much more, although you can see for expansions, they might come up with more information. 
but I think possibly the epilogues of the cases. They're just a small sheet summary. It might be nice during the epilogue to go into more detail, have more information about the particular maladies, diseases, treatments, and little more background information that you could skip if you didn't care about, you just wanted to read your score. But, uh, you know, you, another couple pages where you could read about the medical cases, maybe about some anecdotes or history of that treatment or disease, some more educational information optional to read when you get to the epilogues would be welcome. Um, another area that would be nice, and some of these things are a little harder than others, but one of the... Um, one of the areas that feels like a little bit of a simplica simplification here is that you can see every action takes up one slot, takes up uh, 40 minutes or so. And when you're playing the game, some of these actions feel like they should be more costly or take more time. So like consulting with a specialist or doing some complicated uh, MRI scan versus doing a quick blood test or giving someone a painkiller. It feels like those things should take different amounts of time, be more costly than others. Like if you perform some, op while we were playing, we were often joking, like, do we send her for an MRI? It's going to cost her, like she's going to get a $10,000 bill and it's going to take two hours. And that doesn't Pay, play a part in this game. Asking a question might be take as long a uh, time as sending them down the hall for a consultation with a specialist. Some of that feels like for a more uh, advanced version of the game, it might be nice to have those incorporated. Maybe a test where you don't get the result for a couple hours, then you'd have to start thinking about, we better run this test now because it's going to take a long time to get the results back. So that would affect your decisions about what to do and when, and I think it might add a nice element to it. Um, and then the cost perhaps could affect your score. You, you're not penalized in this game for running unnecessary tests, except to the extent that you didn't do other tests in its place. And it might be nice for that to be incorporated into the score. It might be nice at the end to get a bill the patient to get a bill for all the tests you ran on them. That might incentivize you to be a little more efficient. Um, other areas that it would be nice to see fleshed out is every case here is a one shift case, a one um, eight hour case. It might be nice to see cases that spanned days, maybe a campaign of cases rather than each one being standalone case. It might be nice to have, when we play cold case mystery games, we frequently get a big dossier of documents to go through, various reports, letters, anything. It might be, it would be nice, you could imagine a case at least, where occasionally you do something and you don't just get a card with a quick summary, but you get a full report, for example. Full, it might be nice if the game said, go get envelope six, and you get it, and it's the full detailed report of the blood test that you would really have to search through for detailed information and figure out what you're looking for, that kind of stuff. Might be nice to have a little deeper experience there. Final thoughts. For me, this is an easy 10 out of 10, but beyond that, this is really a unique game. It's hard for me to think of any other medical mystery game at all, let alone one done so well. Um, I'm not generally a fan of trying to shove education into board games. Typically, it just feels like it's extra flavor text that's trying to convince you to care about it. Here, it's fundamental to the entire game. But not only that, you're sort of, you're going to be learning about stuff, not to learn about it, but on your way to trying to solve a practical problem. You will learn stuff against your will. And, um... Not only that, but it feels like you're sort of learning to think like a doctor, learning to think at least differently than you normally would attack a mystery game. And that's because there are consequences to things that you have to be considering and worrying about. And then when you do something wrong, you have to fix it and quickly. The other thing that's so successful here is 
how much of this feels like a real psychological uh, problem in that there are psychological puzzly clues here that are important. But what I mean is really how much these feel like real patients that you really are responsible for. And we play a lot of games on this channel, mystery games that are cold case games, and you're basically trying to solve a, a crime that's already been committed in the past. You want to find the murderer. Well, there's some enjoyment from that. But here you've got a patient right in front of you. You're talking to them. You care about them. They're in pain. You want to help them. You know you can not only fail to figure out what's wrong, but, but fail to save them. They could die. Uh, this all feels very real, and you will care about it. You will... Uh, be thinking about a case. If something goes wrong, you'll be thinking about that case in the days to come. The other thing that's sort of unusual is that there are a class of these games that are well suited toward group play. Most of them aren't. Most of them require such focus on a big long documents that it's hard to play with the group. But here I think this is well suited for a small group, maybe two or three people. And that's because you've got these cards, so it's very easy to pass around the cards, have people take a look at different cards, these different documents. You could have someone looking through this, someone looking through this, someone reading through this, someone reading through this. It's very well suited for dividing up stuff and having people trying to sniff out clues. But the other reason why it's so good for a group thing is because the decision making is so tough and impactful that I feel like you may be arguing about we should do this test first. No, we should do this. We should, a test would be nice, but we have to take care of this first. That kind of debate is great for a group and this game has it all over. The other thing to say as I sort of wrap this up is how unusual this game is in terms of thinking about a target audience. Most of the mystery games we play have to do with murder, often a gruesome murder or serial killer even. And there are lots of people that that appeals to of both genders. This is a very different setting. And I think there are lots of people who don't want to deal with some gruesome grisly murder who would get a lot more out of trying to help someone and solve a medical mystery. And these are mysteries you will have to solve. They're not easy, uh, or at least not all of them, and they are rather involved. But the whole feel of, what, of your motivation and the process and the satisfaction at the end is completely different. And I feel like that means that this game is going to appeal to people that the normal mystery games we play wouldn't. And I think maybe perhaps most especially for young girls uh, who might be considering going into the medical profession, who normally might not be that interested in a med medical game, the motivations here, the, the psychological enjoyment of solving these is completely different from tracking down a killer. And the other reason I think this game is so accessible and would work for a larger group of people is the fact that all of your actions here are on this card. It does make it a little more manageable, a little less overwhelming. Uh, the 14 plus age recommendation on the box, that is the only little challenge here for recommending this to younger people because there really is a lot of reading and detailed reading. And so you need to have someone who's willing to do that. But I can absolutely see this being playable by a mixed group, by a family, where you've got someone older who's capable of reading through these documents carefully, and a younger person who's much more focused on the psychological element of, we should do this, and worrying about the patient and being happy when they're treated well. We need more cases. The good news is that the de developers have announced that there is a new box already in the works, in the pipeline, that will be out later this year in 2024 called Miami Flatline, maybe with some harder cases. Can't wait to play that. 
at $25, I really don't think you can go wrong getting this as a gift to a young adult in your life especially if they're interested in medicine. But regardless, I'd love to see an expansion, maybe a vet veterinary expansion spinoff. Really top of my list of mystery games for a non-traditionally mystery game player. If you do get this game and give it to someone you love and they like it, I'd love to hear back in the comments. If you get it and play through it, it might be fun for you to watch our playthroughs, see how you tackle the case differently. Remember, uh, on any given case, you're only going to see half the cards. Different groups will go through these cases differently. So it will be fun to compare how you did differently than how we did. I'll see you in the comments. Uh -huh.